Guys, it is time to explain why I left OTR. Hello guys, I'm Eddie V. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell, that way you don't miss any of my any of my videos that I post literally every single day. Guys, check out my merch below, grab yourself a t-shirt, and support the channel. Without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about why I left OTR, or formerly known, over the road. So I have been an over the road truck driver for about three and a half years. I'm approaching my fourth year mark, and it's time I did a change. Now, I did not want to leave the over the road actually me and my wife were enjoying it because we still don't have any kids unfortunately and yes unfortunately because we do want to have kids and we love trucking together we love being together we love to travel but here are some of the reasons why i left over the road reason number one is health wise both me and my wife weren't as healthy as we used to be so it's time to focus back on health and the only way we could do that guys is by going off the road and me becoming a local truck driver. And second guys, number two reason is we get to see family more, we get to have time for friends, we get have time to do stuff at home, and we have more time to do stuff at home in general and whatever locals or whatever people have a normal nine to five job actually have, even though I am not nine to five. And third guys, I actually got fed up with my boss. I'll get to that in a second. And fourth, it's the freight rate, and I'll explain that as well. So let's talk about the freight rates, guys. When I started doing this uh, over the road thing, I did step deck, I did step deck first, I did then drive in, then I went back to step deck for the same company I started with, but they didn't pay me good enough, so I moved on and got actually got paid 30% of the load. So that has some of its negatives and positives, but I'm not gonna get into that. I was getting 30% of the load, which was legit, out of a $5,000 load, or let's just do out of a $10,000 gross in week, I get $3,000. And I had some weeks that did three or 4,000, not every week, but average three to 4,000, maybe two and a half thousand a week in 2022. Well, the freight rates dropped at the end of 2022 and they kept dropping, never got up. So there was a few weeks where it did good, but then there was also weeks that it was always just terrible, 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 terrible. And I looked at it, if I join, the offer that someone has offered me, which I'll explain in a later video when I'm ready, that I'll be making the same amount of money, if not more, but I'll be at home more often than staying out the road for three weeks. So the, if the freight rates were skyrocket high, I would have never left. But they're so low, you cannot make any money. I was making under 2000 a week. I was making 1500 a week. I was making the same amount of money I was making doing 55 cents a mile running hard. Okay. That's exactly why I left over the road. So with the freight rates dropping, that was not the only reason. The other reason was I didn't like my boss too much. I'm gonna put it out there bluntly. I like him and I don't like him, okay? It's all started like this. Uh, one, I've never been on the East Coast. He offered me a good load where it wasn't in the city. It wasn't no metro area and it was an East Coast load. I was like, you know what, let's go. So I went and did that East Coast load. That was the biggest mistake I could have ever done. Because after that, he only sent me to East Coast and he gave me runs that I did not like. I got tired of making short runs where he made more money, made more profit, and I worked my butt off loading and unloading and made almost nothing. Because he didn't waste much on fuel. He made bigger bucks when I didn't. In order for me to make bigger bucks, even if I'm on mileage or on 30%, I gotta find a load or you gotta find me a load with partials or a big, good paying load in general going out far. I cannot make money doing these little loads here and there. And also guys, because he sent me to places I didn't wanna go, I didn't wanna do it. Like I was getting tired of sent to places where I didn't wanna go. I wanted to go, I wanted to go to like specific lanes that I wanted to do. He didn't do that. And also he didn't listen to me. He did not, I'm not gonna call out that company. I'm not gonna call out his name. But he did not listen to my advice. I told him so many times, I know this broker. I've dealt with them before in a previous company. Let's go ahead and get this deal done. And let's go ahead and pull lows for them. He would never listen to me. He would say either I'm too far or that idea is not good. And it just wouldn't work out. That's exactly why I left because I had enough. And also it's because of him and his dispatch. Instead of looking ahead of time, 
I would be stuck waiting for a load. Like I get unloaded and I'd be like texting, okay, I'm empty. What do you want me to do? It's like, just go somewhere. I'm like, dude, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I made this delivery in the middle of nowhere. The nearest truck stop is a hundred miles. Like I can't just pull over into somebody's driveway. Like tell me which way I need to go. It's like, just stay there. I'm like, dude, I can't stay at the ship or receiver. Uh, they're going to kick me out. So I got to go somewhere. So you got to tell me. That's what I liked with certain companies at work. They will tell you which direction you want. If they wanted you to go, not this guy. And also they never, it seemed like they never looked for a load ahead of time. They would wait until you're empty. And then when they start looking for a load, for that reason in their books, there's no loads. Now I have to sit a whole darn half the day when I could have been loaded. What I liked about the other company that I worked with before going to them is they always looked ahead of time. I was never waiting for a load. With this company, I was always waiting for a load. Always a lot of downtime, a lot. And their excuse that I delivered late and there's no load down. That is not true. I've been to a dry van company. You could, full, you could pull out and find a load at 12 a.m., okay? You can't. That is just an excuse for you not wanting to work. There's loads out there. Maybe not paying good, but there's loads out there. So I was, there was a lot of downtime. That's why exactly I decided to leave. And I, in the end, I looked at the money-wise. I'd be making the same, if not more, by being local instead of dealing with all this. And also, I didn't like this. You as dispatchers need to look at radar. Why? Because you need to know where you're sending your driver. Are you sending him into extreme heat? Are you sending him extreme cold? Are you sending him to through some icing? Sending him through some snow? Are you sending him through some rain or some severe weather? They didn't care. One time I picked up a load. I tarped it. It was drizzling a little bit. I was fine. When I got to Pennsylvania, it was raining there for two days nonstop. Heavy rain. I untarped it. I was soaked from head to toe by just untarping this little load. And they're like, I got you a load. I'm like, what kind? Tarp. I'm like really what's the point of tarping it if by the time i finish tarping it's gonna be wet anyway i'm like don't you look at the news i can't tarp something when it's downpour it's just literally impossible that's how bad it was raining so i'm glad that load got canceled but uh like there were so many darn tarp loads like it was just crazy and the tarp loads that i was getting wasn't easy lumber i could do i could tarp lumber just like that in my sleep literally no, we would get some weird CNC machine that's not even created properly. It's not created. The brokers always lie. They say it's created. It's not created. Some bunch of pokey, sharp items everywhere. You put you put carpet, but you put rubber over. It doesn't matter. Load shifts a little. Load moves a little bit. The tarp moves a little bit. It pokes through anyway. And then he tells you, why is there a hole in my tarps? Excuse me. I'm not the one who booked these loads where it's impossible to make sure you won't get a hole. Okay. And... I'll get you a story about that later if I want to someday, but that's exactly why I left OTR. Now, I'm never going to say never. Me and my wife have plans to come back to OTR. Even I have plans to go to back to OTR. Some of my plans is never to work for somebody when I go to over the road trucking. I'm not going to work for no Slavics or Russians anymore because they screw you over in money. I can tell you that and I'm not going to work for no mega carrier American guy unless they pay good because American and mega carriers over the road is trash. I'm telling you, trash. They don't know how to pay. I'm telling you, most of your money goes into benefits and then you look, where's your money? That's why I don't work for uh, mega carriers. So if we ever go back to the road, I plan to either buy a humongous sleeper truck, like an AR, ARI sleeper, only an older model where it can run either pre-DPF or glider truck where I can run e uh, paper logs or buy brand spanking new a ARI sleeper with warranty and now their also idea is to customize an older truck to the max and drive on it and my other and my plans are this is just thoughts okay guys this is just thoughts is to find loads where there are contract loads where i don't have to worry about it. i was thinking about maybe hooking up with the contract uh, pods and just go around the nation hauling pods and never have to worry about tarping or sh or chaining down or anything just or do some weird loads all you got to do is do pods so yeah we do have plans to come back to over the road, but we don't know if it's going to happen. But I'm never going to say never to leaving over the road and never coming back. Not canceled. Hey guys, I'm Eddie B.
drive and attempt on the sex series.